Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV, and for Pi Day 2020, we will explore some of the more unusual aspects of this illustrious number and show how we used its digits to create the music you are hearing in the background. We of course know its importance to the properties of circles and by extension spheres. These lead directly to the importance of pi in trigonometry. But the number also appears in some surprising places. Take the sum of inverted squares. As the elements get smaller, this series converges to a number somewhere between 1 and 2. We can compute the approximate value quite easily. Here we are using the programming language Haskell, which allows us to express things in a way that is close to the mathematics, including infinite lists of things. We can start an infinite list of integers like this. I'll use the take function to print out just the first few of this infinite list, otherwise it might take a while. We can then express the infinite series of squares like this, and map an inversion function, one over something, onto this to get the inverse squares. Finally, we can apply a sum function to get the sum of as many terms as we want. Let's try 2, 10, 100, 1000. It seems to be converging to this number. Now if we continue the sum out to infinity, it turns out to have a very specific value, pi squared over 6. The exact specification of the sum is known as the Basel problem. Named for the city in Switzerland that was home to the Bernoulli family who unsuccessfully attacked the problem, as well as the renowned mathematician Leonard Euler who did solve it in 1735, although he did not complete the formal proof until 1741. In his solution, Euler made use of power series, specifically a Taylor series for the sine function. This connected the Basel problem to trigonometry and ultimately to its solution involving pi. Other subsequent proofs also connected to trigonometry and complex analysis and inevitably to pi. All of mathematics is truly connected. And now we turn our attention to the music you've been hearing in the background, which is composed using the digits of pi. In the next segment, we show how it was put together. All right, so we're back in Haskell and we're using a library called Digits that I created to extract the real digits of pi or any other real number. It is available as an open source library linked to the bottom of this video. There's 10 digits of pi. Let's get 100 digits. And I think we're gonna save a list of 500 digits. Now, of course, the use of base 10 for digits is pretty arbitrary, but we'll show how we accommodate that on the musical end in a minute or so. We're going to open up another Haskell library called UTRP, which allows us to manipulate musical objects. We're going to create a series of note objects mapped from our list of 500 pi digits. All right, we have, have our notes. That's a shit ton of notes. Just trust me on this next line, we need to convert it to what's called a line object, and then we can write it out to a MIDI file. And voila, we have MIDI that we can import into Pro Tools. We created two different tracks with a ratio of 22 to 7 in their tempos, much like the popular approximation of Pi. Here we open up Pigments, where we've created a patch. It's got this really cool LFO function that I created. But more importantly, if we go to the keyboard, we see that we have changed the tuning to 10 equal temperament, so that the 10 digits are spread out evenly over the octave. Okay, let's look at the bass line now. We can solo that out and open up pigments again. We modified one of the basic presets to also use the 10 equal temperament, just like in the soprano line. Okay, so this counterpoint of digits of pi is pretty much the entire piece. Let's add some effects, a little bit of tape delay, maybe even a bit of reverb and some compression, and then we're done. For more information on Pi and the things we discussed, please check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.